Okay, hi, I'm Tammy Zarak. I am a portrait photographer in Bartlett. Um, I'm the owner photographer. And you might be asking yourself, what's a portrait photographer have to tell me about my business? Um, but I, as Janet mentioned, I spent 25 years um, working in corporate America. Um, so I was really young when I started. Um, that's why I don't look that old now. Come on, wake up, people. <laughs> uh, but I started with Goodyear. Um, obviously, tires, they're the things that roll down the road. Um, things you have to maintain. Um, but I started back 25 years ago when things were a little bit different. If any of you are old enough to remember corporate America from 25 years ago, it was a different universe than it is today. Um, but at that time, Goodyear had decided that they wanted to change their culture. They wanted to be more about the people because it kind of had been a top-down organization prior and they wanted, they were starting to see Kaizen had been um, introduced in Japan and Dr. Deming had brought that theory to the United States in Kaizen. Um, it's a Japanese word that means um, change for the better and they wanted to adopt that policy because if you don't change, what happens? You die. Everybody knows that one, right? There's, that's actually credited. I have a list. Um, Change or Die is credited to Alan Deutschman, who's a business author, um, and that became a very popular phrase. So you can see, I won't go through all the companies I work for, but you can kind of see I work for a number of different um, corporate companies. And prior to going out on my own as an entrepreneur, I worked for Cars.com for seven years as a uh, regional sales manager. So I went out and worked with car dealers all over, through, was like a four state area. And we worked with them to help them be better at their business, um, which a lot of that is marketing. Um, and then in my own business, um, I've gotten to work with all of you fine people now with BNI. Um, so why do we need change? Anybody? You said you, you kind of gave me the, you have to you know, change or die. Why, why is it important for any organization, not just B&I or not just any you know, companies, but your business, that technology? Line. Okay, that's a good one. You have to stay ahead of the competition. Yes, because the competition is always one step ahead if you're not keeping up, right? one step behind me. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, why else do we need to change? Generations, yep. People, younger people coming in, older people going away in a nice way. Uh, <laughs> the government? Social. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got to adapt to that, yep. Okay. Um, so, another saying is um, you can't build an adaptable, adaptable organization without adaptable people. And individuals change only when they have to or when they want to. So, obviously, Janet has mentioned that we kind of want to change. Um, and some of you are in your businesses and in your chapters are at all different levels. Some of you are just starting that process of change. Some of you have changed all along the way and have a really high performing group. Uh, but it takes about two years to build a really solid high performing team um, when you decide you want to implement some changes. So this is kind of the first blush with that. Um, and you guys are all, thank you for being here, by the way, because um, th while this is actually the least populated group that we've had all day, you guys are here. So that means you guys want to contribute, and that's awesome, so thanks for showing up. Um, so when we start, first start to talk about um, change, we want to talk about your business. Um, and I, it says B&I is your business, but I want to talk about your business, your personal business, the, the business that you either own or work in. Who, and if you guys were going to, let's say you want to go on a vacation, and you don't have anybody to take over, um, or maybe you do, who is that person that you would be looking for in your business? Um, maybe you have that person and you want to describe them to us, but if you don't have that person, who would you be looking for in your business um, to help you? What would they look like? What kind of traits would they have? Your clone? And, and what would be, what are some of those qualities of your clone? Um, hard working. Okay. <laughs> Unique skill sets. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'd have to have somebody of integrity. Okay, integrity. Definitely. Educated, excellent. What else? License? 
Yes. 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 Those are all good things. And actually, I don't know if that's going to come up in this session, but we talked about that in the last session. The license, being licensed, depending on your position, is an important thing that we don't necessarily always talk about. Um, so I want to talk about the people that we have in BNI. There's four different types of people. Um, the first one is they have no business experience. They're just starting out. Are these the kind of folks that we want in our chapters? Yes, no, no, everybody agree no? Probably not, right? Um, they, they could be, but generally speaking, they're not necessarily the folks that we want to have in our chapters. And then we have number ones. Um, they're beginning in business, and they need BNI for referrals and expect to get them right away. Are these the right people? Why not? Right. In, in most cases, you're not getting a whole slew of stuff right off the bat. Um, can we, depending on what your business is, it could be some are easier than others. But isn't it, is there, is there a way to manage this when we have new people? Okay. And when they're brand new, so if they're new in business and they're coming to us because they think we're going to give them lots of referrals, how do we manage that? Okay. So we're managing their expectations that that may not happen for them. Okay, excellent. The next group are the number twos. Um, they receive an overwhelming amount of business from BNI and are considering leaving because they can't handle it all. Do we have those people in our chapter? And how many of those people have we had leave? A lot, right? And that's not a great thing. Um, and the third kind. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Can we manage that? Okay. Well, can we talk about the possibility of that happening with them? Okay. Maybe you rephrase that. What if this happened? work too. You know, the more I think about this, I think we really need to look at the number two and say that's what we want for them. Yes. And then we really do need to start building into this property too. Because we could have them for more than just an odd person in the year. Why not say we got 20 numbers or seven hours we've done a couple of years we got really need to build. What do we do with it? Right. Yes, we all want, at the end of the day, we're all here because we're all in BNI because we want that, right? We want to be so busy just from showing up at a BNI meeting that I'm flooded with referrals. Well, I'm saying, instead of being surprised by the odds going out, just right. Why don't we set up our expectations as a culture? Let's make this happen Yes, and that I'm with you on that. The number three is the same as number two. The difference is they figured out how to only ask for a very specific client that they want. Um, I'm reading a book right now, it's sitting over there in case you, I brought it in case you were curious about it. It's um, Book Yourself Solid. And I've gotten a couple really good things. I'm not even all the way through the book yet, but I've gotten a couple really good things from it. Um, the first one addresses this number three person. It talks about only asking for that specific client that you need. So if you've got so many referrals coming to you,
probably not all of them are exactly that person that you want. And it explains how to narrow in and teach your marketing team, because this is your marketing team, how to give you only those people that you want. Because think about if you only had, in your everyday business, if all you got was exactly the people that you wanted, how happy would you be? If you could eliminate, you all have people that you don't like to deal with, but you take them because you need the business. But what if you could just say, I don't want any of it. I don't want you, and I don't need you, so I'm only going to take these really great people. Would that be a good problem to have? Yeah. And that's really, at the end of the day, what we all want. So it's, it's about honing in on that. And the other thing it taught me so far is how to ask for those things. Um, it teaches you how to reframe what you're saying, and this is, applies directly to what we do in our 60 seconds. So we often, in our 60 seconds, are only giving the features of what we do. We're not giving the benefits of what we do, and really that's what's selling you and your business, is those, those benefits. And I, started, I went to a networking event last night, and I tried it, and it was awesome because I got a whole bunch of like, wow, tell me more, and like, which is exactly what you want. And that should be what I'm teaching my chapter to do for me in my 60 seconds, is what are those things that are capturing that attention? I don't just say, hey, I'm a photographer, and that's the end of the conversation. Or they'll go, oh, you do weddings? And I, no, I don't do weddings. I talk about what I specifically am looking for and by the reaction that I get from my clientele. And I'm sharing that and that's what's getting me activity. And this is where we need to go. This is what we want. We all want to have just that one clientele that we would love to have and we're going to grow. We'll build that culture to get to that point. So really this at the end of the day when we're making a change it starts with the people. and. So we want to talk about who we want. So Vanna, <laughs> who do we want? So, and this can be, think about this for your business, but also think about this for your chapter. Uh, but because it's your business first, and I want to address that, and we, we're going to keep talking about this, but is BNI your business? Yes, it is. It's your business, right? The only reason you all are here, we're all here because this is our marketing, right? This is, for some of us, it's all the marketing we can do. I'm a one-person show. So I committed to my marketing is going to be B&I. I'm going to spend, in my case, I'm an ambassador, so I allocate three hours or more a week to go and talk with. I can hit 25 people in my chapter in one felt swoop, and then I can go to another chapter and hit another 25 to 40 people with marketing and they're going to hit me with theirs. And I suddenly become a trusted advisor to my clients because now I have more people that I know and they know me. How many people are in BNI in this area altogether? 500 people. 500 people are on your marketing team. Do you all know that? Or do you think about my marketing team is my 25 to 40 people in my chapter and that's it? Have you thought about the possibilities? Do you, how many of you people know all 500 people? in the organization. How many people know 250? I might know 250. Okay. <laughs> so if you don't know, if you don't know more than your chapter or one other chapter, I encourage you to take that extra hour to market your business because that's what BNI is. Take that time to go and visit, find out which chapter doesn't have your specialty. It's as simple as going on BNI and all the chapters are listed. And you can go and look and see. I don't. What do you do for a living? You sell coffee machines? There probably aren't a ton of people that do that. So you could probably go visit some other groups, right? Or you might sub for some other groups and get to talk about your business. And guess what? We can do that because we're part of an organization that allows that to happen. So let's go back to who do we want in our business? What are the qualities of the person that we want? Throw them out there. You're going on vacation. Who do you want to run your business? Tell me the quality. Honest, hardworking, ethical, positive. I think I heard trustworthy. Smiling. <laughs> Happy. What else? Think, think these are kind of personality. Think what are the sort of business traits that we want? Dedicated. What else? Well-trained. Well-trained. Knowledgeable. 
What was that? Polished professional. Okay. Forward thinkers. Self motivated? Okay. <laughs> All right. So second list, where? Where do we get these people? You're going on vacation, you, or you're going to take a leave of absence, you need to go away and you need somebody in your business. Where do you find this person that you need to run your business? Clients. clients? So referrals from your clients? Okay. Where else? Friends, business contacts, okay. Where else? Industry people? So are that, would that be competition? Um, not if you set it up that way. Okay. Them, they okay. Creepy okay. <laughs> <laughs> <that> <laughs> <laughs> <Creepy> competition, though. <laughs> They're not always a bad place to hunt for good people. Okay. So you have a. Uh, exactly. Yes. Family. Sometimes we birth our own. You can. Yeah. Well, in your case, you've got a whole team going there. So yeah. You've got a whole chapter. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure we could keep up with you, but what else? Where else do you go? You need to find somebody. You're you're going to be gone for the next month. Where are these people at? Can you ask your BNI group. There's this big entity um, called the World Wide Web. Have you guys heard of it? <laughs> um, you could Google, um, or you could, there's all kinds of places, you know, if you're looking for someone in your industry, you might Google your industry in your area, right, and find people, maybe. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Mm. Church, yep. LSI. Where else, anywhere? You got a good list there? All right. Now, new list, how? Do we get these people? How are you going to get them? You need them in your organization. Ask them. That'd be one way. <laughs> get an introduction from someone. Okay. What else? How about you? I haven't heard anything from you. Pay them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Would you? How would you? If you wanted them to come to work for your business, how would you plant that seed for them? What would be attractive for them? Okay, find out what their interests are. What are their hot buttons? Okay, especially if they're with your competitor or your friends. <laughs> their needs, wants, desires, maybe? What was it? Incentives. What else? How do we talk to these people if we don't know them? And we, they're clients, people that we've been referred to by clients, or um, we found them on the web. What are we going to say? Okay. It's a warm conversation. Okay, excellent. What if you don't know them? Then what? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay, that's fair. All right. <laughs> um, so you can relax for a minute. Vanna. <laughs> what if the people we have aren't these people today? So let's switch it back to B&I. What do we have people, so we, let's look at our list, who, where, and how, and let's think about within our own chapters, do we have people that don't necessarily fit all of these things today? We do. <laughs> Very honest, thank you. Um, what if, what, what do we do with those people? How do we make them become these people if we have people that aren't those people? <coughs> Training, that's one good way. <laughs> how, do, how do we bring them to this point? Motivate? motivate them. How do you motivate them? Bribe or threaten. <laughs> There's that. Um, what's a positive way to get them? Educate. Educate. 
Share the benefits, okay. Competition, that's great. Coach, maybe? You yeah. coach them to be different? Okay, excellent. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so this kind of naturally leads to there's an accountability, right? If, we, if we're trying to change behavior, um, we're talking about accountability. Um, so back to Vanna. Um, what do people need to do to be successful in BNI? What are the things we, we would expect a successful BNI member to do? Show up. What would you say? Okay. Okay. On time. Two two important things. Okay. So being accessible, everybody knows who everybody is and can get to them quickly. Okay. What else? One to ones. Good. What else do we need to be do to be successful in BNI? Be part of the leadership? Okay, excellent. Yes, that seems to be a big one. It's like we give referrals to the people follow up on them. I heard that in all three sessions today. Um, yes, pretty much, isn't it? <laughs> Are you seeing an overlap? That's good. <laughs> yes, so I think we got a pretty good list and we got a list over here, so you can relax, Vanna, thank you. Um, who's responsible for making sure these things happen? Everybody, right? You all are, everybody is equally as responsible, right? It's not the president or the vice president or the secretary treasurer or all the other people that we have that have volunteered to be in a leadership role. It's everybody, right? So you guys are here, so I know you all are committed to doing these things because you showed up. Um, what we need to do is figure out how to make the people, the rest of the people, feel the same way. Yes. Right. The sheriff? Very nice. <laughs> All right, and how do we measure if these things are happening? Right, so there'd be more revenue? Okay. Okay, and I know some of you are secretary treasurers. Are there reports? Okay. Stop lights. Yep. How? Go ahead. Right. Exactly. Right. So, and that's kind of why we're talking about change today, right? Is we need to create that culture where everybody's doing all of those things. Um, we want to measure our, our success because this is our marketing team. And if our marketing team isn't doing what they need to be doing, then what do we, we talked about before what do we need to do? Coach, train, right? Change. They need to change, and we need to help them change. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And how many of you guys know where you fall in your chapter against all these measurements? You're the top. <laughs> no brownie points for you. <laughs> Are you guys getting that information every week where I know who's at the top and who's at the bottom of what they're supposed to be doing? Okay. Do you think that would make a difference in how people behaved if there was actually a measurement shown, perhaps? So it, we'd like to try to think about heading that. And most bigger companies, and this is a big company, b and is a big company, it's a worldwide company, um, we talk about measuring. And sometimes that responsibility, if it's not out there, then we just have to do it. Somebody's got to do it so we can say, I want my team to be successful, so I want 
somebody's got to take that responsibility to manage that within the chapter. And we have a couple chapters that are being very successful, and guess what? They've taken that responsibility to themselves and made things change. Um, what are the ramifications if nobody does any of these accountability things? Failure. Failure, and what does that mean? Right, exactly. Chapter membership is at five. Yes, five. yes. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to recruit for an organization that has hardly any people. Doesn't sound very to go back to the where do we find these people and what do we say when we talk to them. Um, it doesn't sound very good when you. I have a great group of five. Um, I, I have a chapter I'm working with with five members. Right, it's not impressive. Not, yeah, but could that change, literally? Within an, a couple weeks. Ten weeks. Yeah. yeah. So. What area of the town? Huh? What area of the town? Kaito. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything is possible when you set your mind to it. All right. So, kind of another component of this is camaraderie. So, I want to talk about what are we doing and. Anna. <laughs> what are we doing to build camaraderie today in our chapters? What are you guys doing? What are your groups, what are your chapters doing to, to build that? The team starts with the chapter, right? So we have to get people working together. What are you guys doing today? Such as? I do shooting parties as a different thing. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Okay. Right. Well, that's weird. Why would that happen? Okay. Yeah. So there was the keyword, right? Yeah. Okay. So that camaraderie could be the thing that pushes them over the edge. Well, it could be they see how fun you guys are, now, and there's a level of fun, right? Because we're trying to create professionalism. But if there's, they see the camaraderie, that might be an attractor, right? That might be a how. How do we get them? Yes. Yes. And this came up in a different session today. Do the spouses have a potential sphere of influence? So is that another, you know, 100 people that we don't know currently that, you know, and when you go home and you're talking about your B&I group and so-and-so and such-and-such -and, -such and your spouse is like, who? Um, now suddenly they can put together those faces and that becomes, they become an extension of your business because I've got my husband, you know, like, okay, who needs, I need you to find me, you know, I go home with these, every, this, this one's looking for this, do, we know, do you know anybody? You know, and that helps, right? That's just one more extension. And they go to work, and then suddenly now they're engaged. So we need to come to your event. <laughs> All right. Who is responsible for making those things happen? I think we have some people in the room that are in charge of events. Huh? Ah, there's a few of you. Yes, yes. Good, good. Um, does it have to be the event coordinator that makes that happen? Say that again. Right. And if you don't have engagement from the whole group, do things happen in your group? No, no. So how do we get that engagement? If we're doing events, because we're here talking, and you've got event people in the room, how do we get them to show up for events? Accountability. Exactly. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> but
But at the end of the day, you know, we go back to, again, this is your business. So if you go back to your company, and depending on how many people you have, if you decide at my business I'm having such and such event for my folks because I want them to feel appreciated and I want to get to know them better and they don't show up, what do you do about that? Is that, is that a reflection? If you're the owner and you have an event and your team doesn't show up, is that a problem? Yes. So, you know, it, I think that goes back to the coaching and, you know, this becomes, a, I think we don't, coming from the outside, the biggest thing I see is that we're, we kind of all are own, in our own little silo. We all do our, we come in for an hour and a half a week and we do our time. It's kind of how it feels to some people. And then we go out into the world and we forget all about being I. And you know, maybe that morning of our or the night before, if your meeting is at 7 a.m., you're putting together your 60 second. Um, hopefully, or generally, as you're driving to the meeting, you're thinking about your 60 second. Um, but we need to start turning that around to where we have people in the organization, and you guys as leaders um, are creating that culture of these are all the right things to do. And how, why it's the right thing to do is why why is it the right thing to do? because it grows your business, right? It's all about you. This, it, we're all each other's marketing team. So if you're not giving your 100%, they can't give it back to you. And lead by example, teach by example, and suddenly when you're, you know, I'm asking for, I need to know this guy at such and such place, and you know him, I'm like, oh, cool. And I, next week I ask for another person, and you know him. Um, does that start to get some momentum going in the group? That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Excuse me. How do we measure these things? <laughs> Are y'all seeing a theme happening here? How do we measure the camaraderie? But at the end of the day, it should turn out what? Dollars and cents. Chapter growth, right? All the same things, same same sort of things. All of these. Yeah, definitely. Is there some sort of radio or something? <laughs> like I'm hearing voices, not my own. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and the same theme here again, are there any ramifications for not doing these things? All the same bad stuff, right? No money, groups fold, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so action plans. What can you do in your role to make change happen? Okay. Yes, do, well do what I say and what I do, <laughs> in this case. <laughs> what else? Okay. Right. Yes, yes, making, going through the attempt to, to do things the right way will often be just enough catalyst. Um, right. Should it just be the president always saying these things? No. Yeah. Should be everybody, right? Again, this is your team, your company, and we need to look at it like that. Um, I don't think I mentioned this so far in this session, um, they're starting to run together now, but we're in any group of people in any organization there's a bell curve and we want in BNI we want to be there's the top 10% of any company any organization the top 10% of the people are going to do everything right they're doing in BNI one to ones they're um, entering everything online they're um, prepared for their 60 seconds they're going to the events they're doing all the things they're helping coach their fellow folks in the group then there's 10% on the other end that aren't going to do any of that. Um, maybe they show up on time. Maybe they show up with a 60 second, but it's probably not very good. Um, and then they're angry because they don't get any refer referrals, but that's not their fault, right? That's somebody else's fault. Those people are kind of heading, generally they're heading out the door. Um, but everybody else is somewhere on that continuum in between. And our goal is to take everybody up, whoops, up a notch. 
um, to build the organization so that our marketing team is the best marketing team, that the messages we're conveying are everybody's doing everything here so that we're growing our businesses together. Um, and the folks that aren't are probably never going to. So we, at the, you know, right now we have them in the organization. We want to either, how can we change that? How can we get them out of that bottom 10%? All the stuff we said, right? Train, yep, all those things. So that's where we need you all. I, you know, we all need to work together to do that. To, and the folks that don't want to play, they need to go somewhere else, right? Because they don't belong on your business marketing team. Um, so who's responsible? All are. Thank you. <laughs> How do we measure? Dollars and cents. Um, Palms report traffic lights reports, all of these things are things that you do in your own personal business and we need to look at these within our chapters. And guess what, there's homework. Yay, homework. Um, so for all of you in the room, um, you're going to a a do your own action plan. And you're, this is gonna go to your president. If you will answer the question, what are you going to do in your role to make things change? How's that gonna happen? And please turn that into your president. Your president is expecting them at your next meeting. So be accountable. This is where change starts. You are now accountable to your team by saying what you're going to do. Questions? No. Just do it. Yep. Just make that part of your, so while you're preparing your 60 seconds, you've got that action plan ready to go because all of the other leadership folks, um, anybody holding a position hopefully will have been here today. They're all doing it. Um, so the goal is that we're all working together to grow the chapter and the folks that didn't show up, um, they're probably the primary targets for the people that we want to help change. So um, all the people that did show up, give that to your president because now